my dear children welcome to the youtube channel h2o chemistry i am your chemistry teacher satya narayanan today we are going to discuss the topic atoms and atomic mass before we go into the topic we should learn about matter so familiar definition anything that has a mass and occupies space is called matter look at this pen pencil this pencil is a matter because it has a mass i can feel it and it consists it occupies some volume or space that is the reason i can call pencil is a matter i can see means i can detect that matter by any one of my senses so if we look our, around us book pen pencil note pouch whatever everything is called matter the matter is made up of atoms which is a very very small so from there we have got the word atom atom an atom is the smallest particle which is a fundamental particle of matter yes you are right every matter has a mass look at this this pencil has a mass i can feel it i have a question here where does the mass of matter come from if the matter is made up of atoms the mass of matter is due to atoms present in it right so every matter has a mass so the mass must must be due to constituent atoms what it is made up of the matter is made up of atom that's why the mass comes to the matter because of this atoms i do have a, one more question now where does the mass of atom come from so in order to answer this question we need to know the structural parts of atom so that's why we are here now the atom which is very very small how small it is approximately 10 to the power of minus 10 meter that is equal to 1 am strong atom has a two parts namely nucleus and energy shells nucleus it's present in the center of an atom how to imagine this see atom is very tiny we cannot see that so if you zoom an atom to a large football stadium size at the center if you place a marble a tiny marble now you can see the nucleus very very small it is so in such a small location right is called nucleus size is further smaller than the atom so 10 to the power of minus 15 meter approximately so the nucleus is a hard dense area which is responsible for the mass of an atom so we are going to see the reason later now it consists of protons and neutrons in it it's collectively called nucleons because it makes the nucleus that's why it's called nucleons come to the next part energy shells or energy levels i recommend my students to use this word limited orbits because uh, we have a familiar uh, idea solar system the sun is at the center the earth and other planets are moving around it so this kind of idea is not suitable for electrons because electrons are revolving around the nucleus but not like a planet around the sun so minimize this usage instead you go with these two words energy shells or energy levels the energy levels let us look at the points regarding that outside the nucleus present the energy levels are present outside the nucleus yes let us look at this diagram so it is this arrow mark indicates increasing energy when you go away from the nucleus so nucleus is a 
bottom first shell is K shell so which is very least in energy look at this diagram and the next is L next is M and then N so and so on if you number it K is equal to 1 L is equal to 2 M is equal to 3 N is equal to 4 up to infinity so there are infinite number of shells present in an atom right and what is present in the shells or levels energy levels the electrons are present here what present here electrons so why it is called energy levels very important when the electron present in the particular shell the energy of an electron is fixed or the electron has fixed amount of energy until it revolves in this similarly L shell is further away from the K shell so energy wise this is uh, more so when any electron present in L shell the energy of electrons in the L shell is more than the electron present in the K shell I hope you have got this idea so which is lowest energy shell K shell from that iron energy shell is L above if you go iron energy shell is M and so on it goes like that so what you can calculate if any electron present in the K shell you can calculate the energy of an electron that's what is possible right now so you know what is called this so how to know this energy level students how many of you know video games the video game is like your energy levels so when you play in video game do you have any levels yes you have a level 1 level 2 level 3 the level 1 is very easy to play so you need to spend less energy to play that so once you complete you can go to the next energy level next shell next uh, level number 2 that is a little bit tough so you have to spend more energy you apply the concept here the K shell is least when electron present here it has the least energy so once this shell is complete we can move on to the next shell so compare this and you can learn easily now come to the now so far we have learned three particles one is a proton neutron and electron these three particles are collectively called as subatomic particles how do you call them subatomic particles the word sub means what smaller than and present inside look at the next word the electron protons and neutrons are smaller than the atom and also present inside the atom that's the reason these three particles electron proton and neutrons are called subatomic particles i hope you understood this word clearly now let's come to the properties of subatomic particles the subatomic particle the first is electron the symbol we can represent minus 1 e power 0 look at this uh, explanation minus 1 means charge e means symbol 0 means mass so the electron charge is minus 1 e is a symbol of electron 0 is the mass of electron so in the amu unit let us look at this word amu means atomic mass unit so the mass of electron is 1 by 1837 it means very less when compared to proton mass in gram is very very less look at this minus 28 so 9.1 in 10 to the power of minus 28 grams the charge we already discussed minus 1 in electronic units similarly proton plus 1 h1 so plus 1 is a charge of proton h is a symbol of proton and 1 is the mass of proton in AMU units 1 is a mass of proton that's the reason we are writing it so h why do we represent h here h means we say hydrogen we know hydrogen is a first element atomic number is one the atomic number indicates either proton count or electron count the atomic number one means it has a one proton and one electron so if you remove one electron from an atom the atom carry positive charge because it has one if any one electron is lost if one electron is lost from an atom it carry plus one because one proton is excess in the nucleus right so that's the reason we call one plus so if um, one electron 
is removed from the hydrogen, it has only one proton, that is the reason we call hydrogen. H is a symbol of proton and mass is 1 amd. In grams, 1.6 in 10 to the power of minus 24 grams. Electronic unit is plus, plus 1. Similarly, neutron. It is made up of proton and electron together. That's why the charge is neutral. So, plus 1, minus 1. The charge is neutral. And the mass is approximately equal to 1 amu. Then the mass of uh, mass in gram, 1.6 in 10 to the power of minus 24. If you, it seems it's both are similar, but I guarantee the mass of neutron is more than the mass of proton because it's made up of proton and neutron, both collectively together. The charge is zero, it is neutral, neutral particle. Now look at this, what you can conclude here, the electron has a very very less mass or else negligible mass. Negligible means we don't need to consider that mass. So the mass of electron is approximately equal to 1 by 1837 times the mass of proton. So further less, that's the reason. The mass of electron is approximately equal to zero, but not exactly zero. So it's nearly zero. That is why we don't consider the mass of electron while calculating the atomic mass or mass of an atom. When you calculate the mass of an atom, we don't consider the electron count or mass of electron. So what we will consider only the proton and neutron we will consider. Okay, where do we have protons and neutrons? Yes, you are right, in the nucleus. So the mass of an atom concentrate only at the nucleus. So the nucleus is made up of protons and neutrons, hence the mass of atom comes from these two particles. So then what is called mass number? The mass number is very simple. The sum of number of protons and neutrons present in the nucleus of an atom is called mass number, otherwise called nuclear number. We know already this nucleon, protons and neutrons is called nucleon, so it's called a nucleon number. Sometimes it's referred as atomic mass too. Atomic mass too. Okay then. How do you measure this uh, mass of this pencil? We will, uh, if we have an electronic balance, we will place this that uh, shows some reading in grams. So it is a macroscopic particle, we can see through our NAC eye. So that's the reason. The mass of macroscopic particles are measured in grams or kilograms. Yes, you right. Grams are kilograms. What if the mass of an atom is tiny, very, very tiny, right? Very, very tiny. How do we measure the mass of an atom? Yes, we need to have a separate unit. The separate unit is nothing but AMU. So hence we use a term. It's very difficult to measure. That's why we use AMU. AMU means atomic mass unit. Nowadays, in modern chemistry, Instead of this AMU, we use only U, that's called unified atomic mass. What is it meaning? 1 AMU is 1 by 12th of mass of 1 carbon 12 isotope. 1 carbon 12 isotope, its value is 1.661 in 10 to the power of minus 24 grams. So the meaning of this we will explain in next video. Thank you so much. Learn well. If you have any doubts, please command. Thanks for watching.